Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another malicious compliance Reddit video. In our first story, as per my NDA, I am not allowed to discuss this with you. Gather round as I tell you the story of the time I got fired at the worst place I have ever worked. From day one, it was a nightmare. There was zero onboarding or training. I was simply given the login info for a couple of different websites and told to get to work. This company planned large conferences, and I was in charge of speaker coordination. I was the only person in this role. The information solely resided with me. Not a big deal, I say to myself. I'm good at thinking on my feet. I'll just ask questions when I need some clarification on something. That turned out to be impossible. My manager's first language wasn't English. I'm all for learning new languages. I think it's a great skill to have, and it takes a lot of work and being able to speak multiple languages is impressive. The problem was that her English was so poor that it was often very hard to understand what she was trying to say. I once asked if she had time to hop on a call and explain something to me, and she responded with, No crane, self-skills is a must. I am bird without head. It took me a few days to figure out that she was trying to say that things were hectic, she was running around like a chicken with its head cut off, and she needed me to be self-sufficient. Regardless, I did my best in the position. Small mistakes happened here and there, but overall, all the speakers were very happy and felt well-supported. I struggled on the communication with my manager, but I thought the company was happy with my work. Until four months in, when I was randomly pulled into a meeting with my manager, HR, and legal. Effective immediately, I was fired. I asked why I was being fired and why this was the first I had heard of any problems. Why wasn't there a write-up or a verbal warning? My manager said it was because the 10 minutes, I ran the analytics, it takes me to respond to an email was too slow. That was a BS reason and we all knew it. If you don't like me personally, fine. But don't try and make this seem like I was a bad employee. To be honest, I was furious. We do the exit interview with HR and then she asks me to send over any documents I had. We worked on personal computers remotely and describe where I was at in regards to our next event and our speakers. Non-disclosure agreements are really common in this field. I've signed one at every job I've ever worked, but this employer's NDA had a clause in it that worked to my advantage. So I said, as per my NDA, I am not to discuss intimate details or share documents relating to this position with an employer, past or future. Since this firing was effective immediately, you are now a former employer and I am bound by my NDA. HR hemmed and hawed a little bit, telling me that of course I could speak to them about it. This was about their event. I pulled out my copy of the NDA, all with save contracts, and pointed out the exact clause and said that it clearly stated that if I violated this NDA, I would be sued. So no, I couldn't talk to them about the position. HR turned to legal, and legal pointed out that I was technically correct. They were a former employer, and I was bound by my NDA. They fired me 17 days before the event. They didn't have time to start over from scratch. I still keep in contact with some of my co-workers and apparently the event was a crap show. And the manager nearly lost her job because of it. Over half the speakers pulled out once communication broke down. All because I take too long to respond to emails. My boss helps an abusive employee to accidentally fire herself. I originally posted this under Pro Revenge, but was told it would be better suited here. Here is the post. This isn't my personal story, but it happened to a friend at his company and I thought it was hilarious. The main characters are my friend Patrick, a male, 26 at the time, Ali, a female, then about 29, and the boss, a male who's older. Patrick and Ali worked at the same company in the same division under a boss. Allie was abusive to all the employees in the division, but especially to Patrick because he was the newcomer and he was talented and he didn't suck up to her. Allie's bullying tactics included, but were not limited to, taking credit for other people's ideas, convincing Patrick that the others in the division didn't like him, 
attempting to ruin the careers of anyone who didn't suck up to her by preventing them from getting assigned to cool new projects, and last and worst, trying to get Patrick fired, which she almost succeeded in doing. She was so horrible to Patrick that his mental health suffered a decline. Everyone was vaguely aware of her behavior, but she hid the worst parts, so it was never quite obvious or bad enough to get her fired. Plus, she was also popular with the company's clients, who didn't know, and she was a favorite of one of the top people at the company. Allie seemed untouchable, until several months after the Patrick Almost Gets Fired incident, when the company started having a conversation about moving some of their employees to contract positions. Becoming a contractor would have its pros and cons. Contractors would pay for their own health insurance and would have no job security, being hired for individual contracts rather than a permanent employee position, but they would also be allowed to work for other companies. It was a great move for someone who was well known and wanted more visibility and options, but a lousy move for someone lower on the totem pole. Ali, who was somewhat of a narcissist who believed she was destined for greatness, waltzed into the boss's office and told him she wanted to switch to a contractor position. She believed the company couldn't get by without her and would continue hiring her while she also got to work for other companies and gain fame and visibility within the industry. The boss was all smiles and pretended to be supportive of her. This is a great career move. Think of all the options you'll have. As soon as the paperwork was signed, he never hired her for a single contract and her future with the company, the best one in the city for this particular industry, was ruined. Allie eventually found employment elsewhere, but it wasn't as good as the position she'd left. Patrick found out the second part of the story years later. He was under the impression, because of what Allie had said and how people avoided him because they knew Allie didn't like him, that no one was on his side and that his co-workers and the boss had actually liked her. They hadn't. Turns out, the boss felt his hands were tied because she was a favorite of one of the top people at the company, but as soon as she gave him an out that allowed him to never have to work with her again, he took it. Shortly before COVID brought all manner of traveling work to a screeching halt, I was finishing up a job and getting ready to book my travel home. Normally, everyone would just fly, and in my case, that meant a nice short trip of about two hours in the air. However, this particular location and the route back home for me had an extremely scenic train route that took about 12 hours. And as a bonus, I could get a sleeper car for a pretty cheap price, less even than the flight. I asked my boss if there was any reason I had to fly instead of taking the train, as the latter would save them money and he said it would be fine. I didn't waste his time or mine by mentioning any of the above details. I simply booked my ticket and immediately sent in the receipt for reimbursement. Not 20 minutes later, I get an email paraphrasing, What the flip is this? I thought you said you were going to book travel that would save us money. What do you think you're doing booking a sleeper car? You're not one of the big shots out here. Send me a new receipt for your coach class accommodations. Okay, as you wish. Cue malicious compliance. Since this happened so quickly, I was able to cancel my $150 train ticket without issue. And since there was no way I was taking a 12-hour train ride in coach instead of a two-hour flight, I booked my air travel like I normally would and immediately sent in the $450 receipt for my coach class flight. I got yet another email asking me what the hell I was doing. Now, I'm good at booking travel and I know how to find good prices. I knew that there wasn't a cheaper flight to be had. So I wrote back, sorry, this is the cheapest coach class flight I could find. If you can find a better one, please let me know before the 24 hour cancellation window closes and I'll be happy to book that instead. Clearly frustrated, they told me to stop playing games, cancel the flight and just buy the damn train ticket. I didn't. I took the flight home and got reimbursed per company policy for my coach class flight. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, then subscribe. I'd love for you to drop a like, share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one.